Hey guys, I'm Mooj from Pigeonhead Architecture, a channel that's dedicated to making architectural type videos. Today I'm going to show you how to render this sketch pretty quickly, pretty easily compared to other programs. You don't need to model, you just need to make a sketch and then we're going to use Photoshop to render that sketch. The sketch that you're looking at here is one that I made yesterday and I did it on my iPad, uh, my iPad with Procreate. You don't have to do it like that. You can do it by hand on a piece of paper on vellum or on mylar. It's up to you how you do it. The reason I do it on my iPad is because I prefer to sketch on my iPad, but it's completely up to you how you do it. The vanishing point, the cool thing about the iPad is that it allows you to create a, a vanishing point that your lines stick to. And I didn't do that for the first half of the sketch because I wanted to be a little bit more free while I was sketching since I didn't have a complete design in mind. And once I saw that I had more or less of a design, then I went ahead and turned off the uh, assisted grid and I began locking into the planes as I sketched the, the rest of this. It's important that you make your vanishing point. You don't have to complete the sketch 100%. Notice that there's no mullions or anything like that. I just have the overall idea of the sketch. Now, once your sketch is complete, if you did not on the iPad, just go ahead and transfer a JPEG version of that to a Photoshop canvas. If you did it by hand, then go ahead and scan it and import it that way. Once we have it here, um, I actually just dragged and dropped it. So I'm going to make a layer from background. And what I'm going to focus on now is I'm going to create a layer for every separate element. So I'm going to have one layer for glazing, one layer for uh, the structure, one layer for one material, one layer for the floor, so on and so forth. And then I'm just going to uh, skip past this part so that you can see what I'm doing, but I'm not going to sit here and explain every part. But basically what I'm using is the lasso tool, the polygonal lasso tool, and I'm going to go uh, shape by shape, just making um, the cutouts, and then I'll make a layer for that. And in just a moment, once you see me, it'll make sense what I'm talking about. All right, so this is exactly what I was talking about. I haven't named it yet, but I made one layer specifically, this one here, layer three, um, for glazing. And I just uh, made it one specific color right now, which it's gray. We'll get into adding the materials after, but personally, I like to separate all my elements first. And you don't have to do this. You can do it your own way, but that's how I like to do it. You also notice that I made the sketch lighter. And the reason is, is because as we start to create these layers, if you don't have this sketch light, you might not overlap the materials correctly. And then at the end, you're going to have little white lines between each of the elements if you're doing it this way.
All right, so as you can see, I've gone ahead and added one single layer per element, uh, the way that I like to organize it. And now this model is ready to receive materials and a backdrop. For the sky, I've decided to make this a night render. So you can actually import a night sky if you want to, it makes your life easier. But I'm just gonna do it from scratch so I can show you. So I'll start out with a color like that. And uh, little by little, we'll start to manipulate this so that it looks more like a sky. But this is a, a good uh, start right here. Same thing with the ground. I'm just gonna use white for now. And you'll notice that what I did is that I aligned the top of the ground with the uh, vanishing point. So that's where the horizon is. Now this is where the fun starts. Um, I'm gonna start adding some materials to the model and then I'll work on the backdrop and the landscape after. So to add materials, I've already gone ahead and save the materials that I want to use from Google or from or from Pinterest or, or you know various sources. So I've grabbed uh, this copper material from online and this is gonna be my structure or what I call my structure. So what I'm gonna do is first of all, I'm gonna grab my structure and this copper texture and I'm gonna put it in one folder. And, and I suggest you do that the same for everything. You group them depending on uh, the elements that you're separating them. So if you're gonna be working on the ground, you put that in a folder. Once it's in a group, you can go ahead and click that copper. It's right above what I call my structure. And I'm just gonna right click it and create a clipping mask. What that does is that it pretty much crops it to that uh, shape that I had done. And just to show you, this is what I call my structure. So when you do a clipping mask, it basically makes it lock into that space and crops everything out. And this is good because you can move it around and you can play with the scale of it without having to um, crop and, and undo and whatnot. So I'm just gonna pick the most interesting looking spot. I think that's okay. Next, I brought this uh, titanium from online. And these are really easy things to make yourself. You don't have to Google this kind of stuff, but uh, I I'm doing it just so I could go a little bit faster. And I'm gonna put this above what I call building. I'm gonna group those two. And again, same thing, right click and create a clipping mask. And I'm not too worried about the pattern because so if you, if this was a close up shot of the building, you would want these lines to uh, vanish into the vanishing point. And I'm not gonna worry about that because it's gonna be a night render, so you're not gonna be too focused on that. But keep that in mind, this does not look great in my opinion. So I'm just gonna take this moment to add everything I have and then I'll pause it and let you know what, what I've done so far. All right, so now I have everything laid out kind of the way that I want it. There's still space and time to be able to tweak things as we go along, but I'm gonna work on the sky now and I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna show you what I'm doing and then I'll explain it after.
Now for the stars, you can either download uh, PNGs of stars online, or you can do it pretty easily just by selecting a specific brush on Photoshop. The first thing you do is select the brush tool, and then you scroll down, and it's one called Kyle's Spatter Brushes, and there's different kinds, so you're gonna wanna experiment with which one you like most. And the cool thing about this brush is that when you press it, if you press it in the same place, it changes orientation. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna undo that stuff, I'm gonna select white, and I'm gonna play around with the scale. I'll spend a few minutes doing this, and then we'll talk about what we did. This move that I'm doing here, I did it with the moon as well. Basically what you wanna do is you wanna duplicate the layer um, and then the one on the bottom, we could turn off the one at the, at the top right now, but the one below it, which is this one, we are going to give it a Gaussian blur under filter. That just makes it look out of focus. If you do too much, they disappear, but you can see how it just makes the, the stars look completely out of focus. So we're just gonna give it a little bit. And when we bring back the other layer, they all now have like a little glow around them. And we're just gonna make the layer above just a little bit lighter, just so they look like more like stars. And then you can keep those layers like that, or you can merge them together. Once you merge them, you lose the ability to edit them. And then um, since it's lighter down here and it's darker up here, you'd be able to see these uh, not as easily as the ones that are up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and erase some of the ones that are below, but not completely. I'm just gonna, with a, a low opacity brush, I'm gonna go over the ones that are lower. All right, so what I've done now is once I have everything laid out the way that I want to, I add a filter in front of the layers, but I only add it to specific layers that I'm working on at a time. So I added it to the sky, not the stars or the moon, because I want those to really pop out, but everything else I want it to be under the same filter. And the way that you do that is you simply select a layer, you click this button here, and then you press where it says color lookup, under 3D LUT file, you want to scroll down and select night from day. But if you do that, it's gonna put that above every single object, every single layer. So you wanna make sure that after you do that, you right click and you put where it says create a clipping mask so that it clips to the shape of the material. Now I'm gonna try something here and that's uh, making the snow with sand. I know that doesn't sound right, but I, I, I saw this picture and I liked it, the pattern. So I wanted to try to turn this image into snow. Now for this, I will transform it and give it a uh, perspective view so that I can see the, uh, the pattern run this way over to me and disappear into the vanishing point, which I've lost at this point. Oh no, it's right there. So I'm gonna place this point here.
All right, so before I completely jump into the building, I wanna edit this uh, backdrop just a little bit more, add some trees and work on with the lighting. Cause as you can see, the lighting is not 100% right on the mountains because the these images have their own lighting. And so I'm gonna tweak that just a little bit. And the way that I'm gonna do that is by making them completely almost black and then highlighting or removing the rim where the moonlight is gonna be hitting it. All right, so the background's looking pretty nice now. I added the trees. You saw that I added that same uh, night filter to it, and I added a shadow below. I gave it a Gaussian blur below the trees to create that effect of the shadow. I'm not too happy with the way that the sky's looking right now, but it's not a finished product yet, so there's just, there's still things that we can do at the, at the very end. But overall, I'm pretty happy with the effort so far. Now let's get into making the building itself.
All right, so we're headed in the right direction. The building is pretty much complete. I'm just missing this body of water that's here and I'm missing the lights and the glazing that's over here. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in just one moment. I'm gonna get everything put together and then at the very end, we'll tweak the colors so that we can make it uh, look a little bit more pleasing than it does now. So grabbing the right image is kind of tricky. Uh, since I'm gonna put this over here, I think it'll work. Uh, I don't care too much about the perspective of it because I'm gonna blend it into this area here. So first I'm gonna make this color white and then I'm gonna place this over it and then give it a little bit of transparency so that it blends in and we'll see how that looks. All right, so, so far so good. Now we're just gonna fake some mullions by drawing some uh, dark lines and then fixing the transparency so that they blend in a little bit more.
All right, so, so far everything's looking pretty good. Um, the materials definitely need some work. This looks way too harsh. We still need to add that water. The trees do need a touch up. Um, and we, we need some of this light to bleed through here. We need to fix that. And again, the shading doesn't look perfect. I don't know if I'll redo it, but, um, but it probably does need to be redone, honestly. But anyway, let's continue to make some uh, work on this. All right, so everything is looking much better now. Um, it's time to add some finishing touches. So I'm gonna add the reflection now to the water and then I'm gonna make these uh, materials a little bit shiny. So they're gonna be a little bit reflective. And this is a trick that I learned a while back. And in case you didn't know, all you do is pretty much duplicate every layer that you've made so far. And you're gonna merge everything together. It's, it's best to do this at the end when everything's already figured out, but I'm pretty comfortable with how everything looks. So now that I have everything uh, duplicated and copied and merged together, um, you simply flip the image around. Right? And then the next part that we're going to do is we're going to put this where the water is. And we hadn't made a group for this yet. And of course, just like we've been doing, we're gonna create a clipping mask. And so now I can grab this and move it to match up this part here. Now, um, one last thing, we can try making it just a little bit um, pushed together like that. Just fake it a little bit so that we get some of this contrast here. And we're not done just yet. Let me stretch this out. So we're not quite done. Now that we have this, created, we want to add a filter to it of motion. And how this works is basically where the arrows point, that's where it's going to blur to. So if I move it to the right, it, it's going to run this way. We're going to do it both ways. And I think this is enough blur. So that's one way. Then we're going to do it one more time. But that, now running the other way. I think it's too much. Let's go ahead and redo that and, and add less motion. Let's try five pixels. Yeah, that seems nice. Now I'm gonna grab that same layer that I just created. I'm gonna duplicate that. And I'm gonna move that over to the building. And I'm gonna place that above the metal.
All right, so it looks awesome. One last thing before we end it here, because you know, we could be here all day long doing stuff to this thing, but I'm pretty happy with the final result. So one last thing before we end this video is we're gonna add a gradient map to it. And I'll show you what it's like. It's basically to tie all the colors in together. Um, and you do that same way you do everything else. You could do it at the top of all your layers just so that it's nice and organized but you go down to this button over here and then you put gradient map and then it gives you a, you know, from default, it gives you this thing, which looks awesome in my opinion, but we're actually going to create our own and we're just going to double click this and we're just going to double click that. We're going to delete this middle one here, move this one over here and this one here. And we're going to click this and make this uh, like a dark blue. And then the one on the right, we're going to make it uh, light blue. I think for this one, we can make it a little bit darker. And then once you do that, we're just going to remove the opacity or make it um, opaque a little bit translucent. Let's try 50. Maybe we can do um, 25. Yeah, I think 25 looks good. So this is the before, this is the after. It just kind of smooths everything out. And one, you know what, one last thing. I saw this, I saw someone do this the other day. I had never seen it before. I'm gonna duplicate all this, these layers. Um, let me undo that. First, let me save because it's a lot of work that I've done. But let me, I think it's because I grabbed the top layer. So let me duplicate this. Yeah, we're going to merge this. And we're going to do a high pass filter. I had never done this before, but I think it like makes everything look sharper. Um, where is that? It's under filter, high pass filter. Oh, it's under other, that's right, high pass filter. And let's make it like that. And then we're gonna I think it was overlay that I was supposed to do. Then we're gonna set that to 50. And again, that's the before and that's the after. So it just makes everything a little bit sharper, which I'm not against. Actually, let's make it 25. All right, so there you go. This is an easy way to make your sketches look great without having to model anything. Um, it's pretty efficient. I think this took me about two or three hours to do. And you might think two or three hours is a long time, but modeling and then experimenting with lighting and materials takes a long time. So think of this as like a very refined sketch uh, that you can use for your beginning of your projects or your midterms. You could do this even for your finals, you know, but by the time you have finals, you tend to already have models made. So doing things like this, you don't really need to do unless you enjoy Photoshop the way that I do, but it's a great skill to have. Photoshop, you can do so much with it. And I'm gonna be making a few of these as we go on into the future. So let me know what you guys think. Leave your comments down there and I'll, I'll see you down in the comments.